Across the country, more and more schools faced with budget cuts and an increased focus on educational outcomes have pushed arts education to the background. In fact, off the agenda. Far too many schools don't have arts programs at all. Here to discuss why these programs are so important is Debbie Allen, founder and artistic director of the Debbie Allen Dance Academy. Also, Jack Hayes High School graduate, Houston, Texas. All I'm saying, me <laughs> too. Also, Jack A, Dondre Whitfield, and Brian White. Everybody, certainly glad uh, to have you here. Look, I was in the band in elementary school, middle school, high school. My brother was, all of my sisters. It was so important. And it really did make a difference in terms of keeping you involved and also tapping into another aspect of your mind. Mm -hmm. So to see in Los Angeles, pulling it out of elementary schools, to see it happening across the country, you know, how does it make you feel about a generation of kids who literally will never get an opportunity to, un to understand band and dance well, and art? I mean, it is disenfranchising mm -hmm. millions of young people in America. We are writing an epitaph for America. Without arts, there is no innovation. You know, they keep talking about China and India are gonna outdistance America. Well, we haven't lost our footing because of our innovation. iPod, iPad, Facebook, the whole Middle Eastern spring awakening was based on that kind of internet and connection, and that came right out of America. How are we supposed to stay at the front runner of this if we don't connect young people with creativity? It can't just be math, right. it can't just be science, it can't just be literature, it needs to be the arts. And it is the, their right, it is their right, and it is the right of every parent that is paying tax dollars. Hear me, children? It's your right to Jack, have arts education. Jack, hey, so. you went to an art school. Yes, uh, high school of music and art. And had I known it would be that significant for me, I was in New York, you know, lived in Harlem. And I went and tried out me and two other girls, and we had to um, audition. I like 300 kids. And we all sang and did our thing, and I went home, and everybody was patting me on the back. And I was like, what's up? You know, because I didn't think I made it. And they said, you made it. And when I went, she's right. It's, it's our right. Because it, it really, because I was very smart, math, all of that. But that other part of me, I, who knew I would be an actress? Dondre Do you know? and, and Brian, when you talk about that, it's amazing whenever this conversation comes up, people put, because folks say, okay, you know, painting, sculpture, dance. I mean, that, that stuff, that's really not <laughs> that big of a deal. Creativity is a huge deal. I mean, well, yeah. I grew up in, 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 in Brooklyn, and I, I don't care how good a kid you are. If you have too much time on your hands mm -hmm. and you don't have something to do with all that creativity, that creative energy, it's going to move towards something bad because there's going to be someone sitting around going, you know what, I'm bored. Why don't we do this? And then all of a sudden, all that creative energy, because it has to go somewhere, goes to something negative as opposed to something positive. Mm -hmm. Brian, you have an initiative where you're talking about how do we build up young people. Black Carpenter, your, yeah. But your Black Carpenters initiative. And when you look at arts, mm -hmm and you look at them taking physical education out, then we see the result of obesity rates skyrocketing among young kids. Yes. Isn't that a perfect example of what happens that, look, if you take this out, this will be the end result five, 10, 20 years down the road. Yeah, I mean, creativity forces you to use both sides of your brain, left and right. When you remove the use of one side, you're, you're disempowering these kids. They're not able to creatively think in ways uh, that they weren't introduced to early enough. And the biggest thing about, about the arts is it, it teaches us to appreciate what's unique about each individual rather than compete because the only way to be original is to be yourself to be unique and that's what's so beautiful about the arts. it's yes, character education Amen. and it is creativity and it is a sense of self esteem mm -hmm. that is n you cannot put a price tag on this so how do we then begin to mobilize like, how do we begin how do we begin to get them school boards city council well, are there organizations right now that are actually leading the effort uh, yes there are organizations artforla.org mm -hmm. you can go online and see about them or you can just, just chime into what's happening with the school board here mm -hmm. in Los Angeles. Los Angeles has the second largest school district in the country. Mm -hmm. So what happens here will right. reverberate. It's the same thing you talk about yes. music in New Orleans and the impact in Louisiana. Uh, well, here's the thing, Roland, it's, it's about uh, parental participation. I, I went to a Jewish high school and there's 97% of the parents involved in PTA. Guess what, we had a music program. 
Um, in Detroit, I just spoke at Cass Tech High School, 98%, an all black school, 98% of the student body's black. They have a music program because 98% of the parents are involved. So the first thing, the first step towards changing it is activating our community and making sure the parents understand how important it is to the development money. of their kids. I think the parents know. We, right. we had a protest the other day, or we were sitting in on the board meeting. There were parents lining up the streets. But you have to understand, in certain communities, the black, the Latin community, those parents are working. Yeah. They may not right. have time yeah. to go to a meeting. That is the prob problem. That's we the cannot problem. disenfranchise because then it becomes a very racist yep. proposition. Nope, so we, we also have to yeah, we yeah. also have to vote to say we will spend more tax dollars. That means if they want to add more right. to our taxes, we need to say yes and to allocate that. it. Jack, well, you, it. Yeah, you've got to though balance it. To be honest, because I used to teach American history, and um, uh, even though the arts uh, is my number one passion, my number one passion is the future, and the kids need to go and learn about technology because that you saw that special Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. We've got yes. to learn that part too because that's where the jobs are going to be. And then we can take our money and give it to our kids for these programs too. We've got to take money from all sources to get the money. That's connected. It goes hand in hand. It's definitely connected. It's, it's, about connection. it's about connection and balance, but also you've got to mobilize people and they can't just say it's important. They've got to they get off the couches and begin to say, well, we're to going to be there. 10 seconds, final comment before I go. Go ahead, real quick. I, I was going to say that this really also speaks to how we don't feel like our voice is ever heard. Right. Even when we do have the time or can make the time to go to some of these meetings, mm -hmm. we really don't feel like our voice is going to be significant enough to I'll make I'll say change. this here. Your church is out there. you got people who in your church choir. That's where you start. Mobilize them. Go to the school's boards. Debbie Allen, Jack Cade, Don Dre, Brian, we appreciate it. Thanks so much.